April 16, 1945. The seas off Okinawa are restless. On the radar screens of the U.S. fleet, dozens of blips crowd the scope. This is no mere squadron. It is an entire wave of death diving straight toward them. Klaxons howl across the decks. On board the destroyer USS Laffey, gun crews grip their controls, knowing the ship's fate will be decided within minutes. On the horizon, zeros and vowels streak in from Kyushu, sunlight flashing across their wings. Kamikaze pilots, men sworn to die, intend to take a warship down with them. In the past, just a few breaking through the wall of flak could turn a destroyer into a burning wreck. But today is different. As the first 5-inch 38 shells leave their barrels, they carry a secret within their noses. No more guesswork with time fuses. No need for a direct hit. Instead, a tiny radio device listens for the enemy's echo. The sky erupts in sudden flashes. Shells detonate in midair, right among the kamikaze, ripping wings and engines apart before they can dive. On Laffey's deck, sailors stare in shock. The attackers are stunned. The Japanese had never faced a weapon like this before. It was the proximity fuse, the shell that could think. The proximity fuse also known as the VT fuse, was one of the most revolutionary inventions of World War II. It seemed like a minor detail, a small component in the nose of a shell, but inside was a miracle of wartime science. It contained a miniature radio transmitter and receiver, a tiny amplifier made from rugged vacuum tubes, and a compact power source. As the shell closed in on a metal target, like an aircraft, the radio waves it emitted bounced back stronger. The circuit instantly triggered the explosive charge, detonating the shell within meters of the target. This turned every anti-aircraft round into a thinking weapon. No longer did gunners need to calculate exact seconds for a time fuse nor pray for the impossibility of a direct hit. Now it was enough to fire toward the enemy formation. The VT fuse would do the rest. Developed in utmost secrecy by Section T at Johns Hopkins and first deployed on the Navy's standard 5-inch 38 gun, the proximity fuse changed the entire balance of the air war. For American sailors, it became an invisible shield. For Japanese pilots, it was a nightmare. Ordinary-looking shells that could burst at exactly the right time and place, turning even suicide missions into hopeless gambles. Before the proximity fuse, fleet air defense was a gamble. American gunners relied on time fuse, setting each shell to explode near its target. But in high-speed aerial combat, even the smallest miscalculation rendered a burst useless. Contact fuses were even worse. To work, a shell had to score a direct hit on a plane flying at more than 250 miles per hour. When Japan launched Operation Kikusui at Okinawa, the problem became dire. Thousands of kamikaze pilots were thrown into the fight. Their tactic was simple but devastating crash straight into U.S. ships, carrying bombs in their own lives. Facing them were the thin-skinned vessels of the radar picket line, destroyers and escorts that bore the brunt of the first waves. Survival was fragile. Just one aircraft breaking through could mean a bomb on the deck, a ship torn apart, and hundreds of sailors lost. U.S. commanders knew Ordinary flak would not be enough to stop this storm of sacrifice. Into this crucible came the proximity fuse. With it, every shell became a self-acting killer, detonating the instant an enemy aircraft entered its lethal radius. It gave the U.S. Navy a chance to live and gave Japan a shock they never expected, that even suicide could be stopped by science. 
Inside the small nose of a Navy 5-inch Star 38 shell lay a marvel of wartime science. The proximity fuse contained a miniature radio transmitter and receiver, a tiny vacuum tube amplifier, a power source, and a sensor. As the emitted radio wave struck the metal of an aircraft, the returning signal grew stronger. In a fraction of a millisecond, the circuit recognized the change and triggered the explosive. The result, the shell detonated within a few yards of its target, close enough for shrapnel to tear it apart. No direct hit required, no guesswork needed. Compared to older fuse, the difference was night and day. Time fuses demanded precise calculations of trajectory, angle, and speed, an almost impossible task in the chaos of battle. Contact fuses required a hit, which was rare at best. But with the VT fuse, each shell became a kind of automatic aimer. The gunner only had to fire toward the enemy, and the fuse would do the rest. Wartime reports showed effectiveness multiplied many times over. A short burst of VT shells could bring down as many planes as hundreds of conventional rounds. That was the edge that transformed the entire balance of air defense in the Pacific. April 16, 1945, USS Laffey, a small destroyer, was ordered to hold the line at Pickett Station No. 1 off Okinawa. It was the most dangerous post where the first blows of Japanese air power would fall. Sailors grimly called it the hot seat. Whoever stood there might never return. That morning, Laffey's radar picked up a massive swarm. Over 50 Japanese aircraft, Zeros, Vals, and bomb-laden attackers were charging in. Klaxons screamed. Sailors scrambled to battle stations. On deck, the 5-inch for 38 guns swung into position. The first salvos ripped into the sky. But unlike the years before, each shell carried a deadly secret, the proximity fuse. As they arced through the formation, the heavens lit up. Shells detonated in midair, right among the kamikaze, showering shrapnel that shredded wings and engines. Many pilots never came close, blasted apart in fiery mid-air deaths. One crewman later recalled, we saw planes exploding only a few hundred yards away. A year earlier, they would have hit our deck. But the nightmare was not over. Despite the carnage, some kamikaze still broke through. In the span of hours, Laffey was struck again and again. Six planes slammed into her, Four bombs tore into her decks. Fires raged, smoke billowed, blood slicked the steel. Yet the ship refused to die. The surviving guns kept firing. Each VT shell burst in the path of another attacker, buying precious moments, breaking more dives. When the smoke finally cleared, Laffey still floated, scarred but unbroken. She earned the name, the ship that would not die. For the Americans, it was living proof of their new weapon's power. For the Japanese, it was a stunning realization. Even pilots willing to die could not break through this invisible wall of fire in the sky. The Battle of Okinawa was the U.S. Navy's greatest trial by fire. From April to June 1945, Japan unleashed more than 1,500 suicide aircraft. These were not ordinary air raids. They came in relentless waves called kikasui, floating chrysanthemums. Each attack saw hundreds of planes hurl themselves at the fleet, turning the seas around Okinawa into a slaughterhouse. The radar picket line, the destroyers and escorts stationed on the perimeter, took the brunt. Nearly half of all ships sunk at Okinawa came from this thin shield. Few expected to survive long on such duty, but this time the Americans had a secret edge, the proximity fuse. The Navy's 5-inch 38 guns, armed with VT shells, wove an invisible wall of fire. 
Gun crews recalled, the planes came closer and then vanished in flashes before they could dive. Instead of praying for luck, every salvo now delivered results. Hundreds of kamikaze exploded midair, torn apart before striking their targets. The actual number of hits was far below what Japanese planners had counted on. For Japan, the shock was devastating. The suicide tactic they had hailed as their ultimate weapon was being blunted by a technology they did not even know existed. One Japanese officer admitted after the war, we could not understand how American gunners were so deadly accurate. When the smoke cleared, the verdict was unmistakable. Okinawa had failed. Thousands of planes were lost, their pilots gone forever. The U.S. Navy, bloodied but unbroken, still stood. And in that survival, the proximity fuse proved that it was science, not sacrifice, that would decide the fate of nations in this war. The proximity fuse did more than save ships at Okinawa. It reshaped the course of World War II. Before VT, naval anti-aircraft fire was a gamble. Hundreds of shells for a handful of hits, the rest wasted. With the fuse, every round fired had the chance to be decisive. Kill rates multiplied, survival odds for carriers and fleets soared. Its impact did not stop in the Pacific. By late 1944, VT fuses reached Europe. During the Battle of the Bulge, American artillery used them for the first time against German troops. Shells detonated overhead, showering lethal fragments, annihilating battalions in minutes and shattering morale. American commanders would later rank it among the two inventions that truly turned the war. The atomic bomb and the proximity fuse. One ended the conflict with a single cataclysmic blow the other, quieter, saved tens of thousands of lives and kept America in the fight during its darkest hours. The lesson is unmistakable. Modern war is not won by courage or numbers alone, but by the fusion of technology, industry, and human resolve. At Okinawa, Japan learned this in bitter defeat. And from that moment, the future of warfare belonged to those who could turn science into a weapon. The proximity fuse, at first glance, just a small device in the nose of a shell. Yet in World War II, it achieved the extraordinary, turning ordinary rounds into thinking weapons, shielding fleets from kamikaze waves, and shifting the balance of the war. Its story reminds us that history is not only shaped by colossal weapons like carriers or atomic bombs, but also by small inventions born at the right time. Innovations few noticed saved tens of thousands of lives and altered the destiny of nations. And the proximity fuse is only one of countless untold secrets of World War II. The battles, the technologies, the men and women behind them all still echo through the memory of the century. If you wish to keep uncovering these hidden chapters, join us at Oblivion Archive. Here the past is never silent. It whispers still, reminding us of the moments that shaped our world.